Good afternoon, dear teacher and classmates. I am Mary Grace of Helbolingo, your reporter for the popular stories and legends in Filipino mythology. But before diving in with one complete story of a legend in our country, allow me first to explain to you of what is a legend in our country and how does it originate. Alamat is a Filipino word for legend or folktale that is used to refer a legend in our country. Our country as well is rich with these mythical tales that are unique to its region of the country, the Ilocanos, the Tagalogs, the Visayans, and the Mindanaos. There were several unique cultures and traditions that exist within the confines of its many islands. As an archipelago, our country is home to several ethnic tales and legends that are passed on from generation to generation. These stories and legends have since then become a part of our tradition and culture. Furthermore, there are many indigenous tribes across the Philippine Islands. Many Filipino folktales and famous Philippine legends that have been told throughout the years and have been taught in Philippine literature. As such, we need to respect, care for, and give importance to these stories. That is the reason why legends are commonly taught by the children in order for them to be motivated and encouraged to do good and to avoid evil. So here are the examples of legends in the Philippines. First is the legend of the man with the coconuts, the legend of the rose, legend of the piña, and the legend of Mayan volcano, wherein I am going to share to you the legend of Mayan volcano later on. For the comprehensive discussion, the Philippines have seen many transformations in their folklore and myth. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were many poets and authors began taking traditional folklore and characters. That is the reason why Damiana Eugenio stated a differentiation between folklore and legends in order for us to better understood the difference between the two. So, for the legend, it is known to be shorter compared to the folktale, which is known to be longer. Then, for the legend as well, it has only a single and simple motif and an artless plot construction. While for the folktales, it consists of a great number of motifs or smallest narrative units, which are combined artistically and progresses in the manner of a novel to an outcome. So, it is already important to know that uh, if it's a longer version, it's a folktale. So, for the legend as well, it is associated with a definite place and time and happens at a definite time or in any case at a time not differently constituted than our own, for example, in a historical time. While for the folk tales, it takes place almost always in a fairy land that never and nowhere existed and an ideal fairy tale time. Then, for the legend, it likes to narrate especially unsuccessful attempts to raise treasure, deliverance, and the like, and with a frightful, often tragic ending. So, just like for the story in Mayan Volcano, it, it, it usually consists of a tragic ending It's never been happy. Then, for the folk tales, it is an idealistic in its conduct. So, for example, in a fairy tale stories or in folk tale stories, the ending usually is they live happily ever after. And now allow me to share with you one complete story of a legend entitled The Legend of Mayon Volcano. A long ago, in a place called Ibalon, there was a beautiful maiden. Her name was Daragang Magayon, the daughter of Makuso, the chief of the tribe. One day, Daragang Magayon strolled down near the river while crossing. She stumbled down in a rock and fell quickly in the water. She swiftly swept down the stream by the current. Help me, help me, she cried and cried. Fortunately, her cries was heard by Panganuran and his bodyguard, Amihan. Thank you for risking your life to save me, she cried. How can I repay you? My father is the chief of this tribe. Surely, she will reward your heroism, whatever it takes. Her beauty immediately captivated Panganoran's heart. He realized that he finally met the perfect woman for him. At the same time, the Ragang Magayon was attracted to him. Panganoran then asked permission to Makusog to marry the Ragang Magayon. But Makusog could not permit their marriage. Tribal law forbids marriage outside their clan. 
As tribe leader, he had to enforce the law. But as a father, he wanted to make his daughter happy. Meanwhile, Patuga learned about Panganoran's intention. Patuga was the most ardent suitor of the Ragang Magayon. For years, he had been convincing the Ragang Magayon to marry him, but to no avail, she cannot repay his love. One night, Patuga and his cohorts kidnapped Makusog, then sent word to the Ragang Magayon that her father would die if she would not marry him. Without a choice, the Ragang Magayon acceded. Only then did Patuga release Makuso. Soon, Patuga and the Ragang Magayon will be married. But in the midst of merrymaking, pandemonium broke out when Panganoran and his tribe arrived. Fighting ensued between the two tribes. In a few moments, Panganoran fatally struck Patuga. However, during the skirmish, a poisoned arrow shot nowhere fell on the Ragang Magayon's breast. Panganoran rushed to her. As he kneeled over the di dying the Ragang Magayon, an enemy hacked his head off. After the battle, the Ragang Magayon was buried, and her death was mourned all over the land where she was put to rest. After the tragedy, a mountain mysteriously appeared. This mountain is now known as Mayon. It is said that even death and in another form, she is still haunted by the man who loved her. But when Mayon is calm, Panganoran is embracing her. The tears of Panganoran are shed at the time of his grief. Until today, Many is still delighted by the love story behind the legend of Mayon Volcano. So, regarding the legend of Mayon Volcano, the moral that can be captured from the story is to follow rules, respect authorities, and respect others' feelings. In the story, Panganoran went to Makusong, who is the father of his loved one named Daragang Magayon, to ask permission to marry her. Makusog is also the tribe, the head of the tribe. Therefore, Panganoran went to see Makusog to ask permission to marry Daragang Bagayon. However, even if Makusog wanted to allow his daughter to marry Panganoran, he followed the tribal law of forbidding marriage outside of a clan. Panganoran respected Makusog because he is the father of his loved one and the head of a tribe. Even if, they, if what they wanted did not work out, Makusugs and Panganoran's obedience to rules and authorities should have led to a peaceful community. However, Patuga, the eruptive one, who was the most ardent suitor of Daragang Magayon, did not respect authorities and kidnap Makusug so that Daragang Magayon would be forced to marry him. This disobedience of Patuga led to his death, the death of Panganoran, and the death of Daragang Magayon. If only Patuga respected authorities and respected the feelings of the Ragang Magayon just as how Makusog and Panganoran showed obedience and respect, Patuga's actions would not have resulted to the death of the characters. So therefore, this tells us to respect laws, authorities, and other people so that we can maintain a harmonious relationship to other people and to the entire community. That is the legend of Mayon Volcano's moral lesson. It is also known as the Ragang Magayon's moral lesson. It can also be considered as a reflection about the legend of Mayon Volcano. That is all for my reporting and thank you so much for listening about Filipino mythology and hopefully you've learned much about our mythology. Have a great day everyone and stay safe always. Bye! Once again, we are the group 9 members in Filipino mythology, together with my group mates, Ms. Rave Maika Tanyeza, origin and literary background, Jade Nina Marie Tundal, who discusses the earliest hero, Ms. Jean Versalas, who discusses about the popular stories and folktales, and with me, Ms. Mary Grace of Helwalingo, who discusses the popular stories on legends.